Alec Gillis and Tom Woodruff Jr. are the effects artists behind some of the most famous movie creatures of the past 30 years. They've been at the frontier of practical effects since starting their company, Studio ADI, in the late 80s. But there was a time when the rise of CGI threatened to make them suddenly obsolete. Alec and Tom first met back in 1985, when practical effects were pretty much the only effects. They were connected through their shared mentor, the FX legend Stan Winston. That's when we sort of got together and realized that we shared a lot of interests that brought us to wanting to do monsters. We had so much in common that, that we kind of had this bond. After founding ADI in 1988, the two quickly made a name for themselves as the guys that top directors could turn to whenever they needed help bringing unusual characters to life. ADI's in-house artists oversee every stage of a character's development. They start with the concept design, then create all the makeup, puppets, or animatronics that the character requires. When it's time to film, Tom will often step into a suit to play a character himself, while Alec and his team of puppeteers control any mechanical elements behind the scenes. So we work together, it's, it's like through every step of the way to up to the point where we get that image on film. Just five years after starting ADI, Alec and Tom won an Oscar for their work on the character of Madeline Ashton, the walking, talking corpse played by Meryl Streep in Death Becomes Her. To create Madeline's distorted proportions, ADI built, programmed, and shot a number of animatronic duplicates for Meryl. They programmed the head with a lip sync animation. The result was incredible. I think I need a doctor. From there, ADI kept taking on new challenges in animatronics. They made their first motion control creature with Goro for the martial arts movie Mortal Kombat. This is the version of Goro you'll find in the Mortal Kombat comics and video games. Tom and Alec wanted the live action Goro to be more realistic, which wasn't an easy feat considering that he's a giant warrior with four arms. They decided to make a practical fighting suit and put Tom inside it. While Tom controlled Goro's lower arms from inside the suit, Alec and five other puppeteers operated the upper arms, head, face, and neck, which were all mechanical. This is called a telemetry device. That is the mechanical contraption that is worn by a puppeteer, and all the movements that that puppeteer makes are translated to Goro's upper arm. Things weren't exactly easy for Tom inside the 125-pound suit. Tubes running up the interior were his only source of fresh air or water for hours at a time. There was no room for air slits or eye holes, so he used a small video screen to see his surroundings. Plus, he could only communicate with Alec via radio by using a small microphone inside the suit. It was quite a, uh, an undertaking for us. It was an amazing feat of technology that we bu built very early on. But soon, ADI's achievements began to be overshadowed by advancements in the digital realm. What, what we were doing in the 80s, and we were the rock stars of the guys behind the scenes. In the moment where the industry was starting to rush into CGI, it was a very sobering moment. And they would say, you guys are going to be out of work. Luckily, directors soon realized that practical effects still had a place in movies. When CGI made its foray into really big popular movies, like Jurassic Park, we also learned that they needed an animatronic, a practical a thing to help support what the audience was seeing as digital imagery because it just helped completely paint a realistic picture for the audience. The nice thing about that was that it gave us the opportunity to work on more movies that without CGI would never have been made. Look at Starship Troopers that we worked on as an example where until the advent of computer technology there was no way to get thousands of bug creatures running across the surface of a planet. ADI built an army of giant bugs for Starship Troopers, earning Tom and Alec their third Oscar nod for effects. The main technique to execute the, the creatures was CGI, but uh, there were moments that benefited by real pieces when uh, people could be picked up and chomped in half by giant actual mechanical bugs, because there's nothing like having the real thing there on set. Lately, Hollywood is returning to that idea that nothing beats the real thing on screen. Tom and Alec are sometimes even asked to create characters the old way, with makeup and prosthetics work that may be simple, but is no less terrifying. 
A perfect example is the Pennywise that ADI designed for the It movie. They started with sketches from director Andy Muschietti. It was our job to transpose Andy's design onto Bill Skarsgård's life cast. You know, the great thing about this design that I think is so brilliant is that it turns Pennywise into a child. That was the goal here, was to make him look like uh, almost a toddler. It had a sort of a bigger head, like very young, you know, children would have. We gave him a little button nose and we gave him these cute little teeth with these little kind of like bunny incisors. But it was all in, 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 in working with this hideous clown with cracked paint. We rounded out his cheeks and rounded out his nose, but then we gave it that texture of decrepit decay, which is what makes him extra creepy. Of course, the thing that really brings it to life is Bill Skarsgård's performance. I cannot think of a, an, a choice that would have been any better as a Pennywise in Bill Skarsgård. He looked like a computer effect. His, his, his mouth just went like this. I got chills in the, uh, in the makeup trailer watching it. These days, as directors increasingly choose to incorporate practical effects alongside CGI, Tom and Alec have no shortage of work. It's like a revolving door of young directors coming and saying, whatever this project is, I've got to work with you guys. I've got to do ADI. So we have never been in a better position to bring our kind of style and our kind of life to all of these different elements. Well, I think what makes us work so well as collaborators is that we both have a com complete passion, right? A complete love for the genre. And what we acclimate to is, are things about characters, people in, in incredible situations and in, with incredible things happening to them or happening from them. 